But then he got like the more deeper questions. You're like, why do I have to answer all these questions? <laughs> What's up, Flourish fam? If you're new here, I'm Dolores and this is Charles and welcome to Flourish with Dolores. If you're watching this, I'm guessing that you are either thinking about being engaged and married or you're engaged and getting ready for your marriage. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what premarital counseling is and benefits that we got out of it. Charles and I dated for seven and a half years before we before he popped the question um, and we got engaged and we knew that we needed to do premarital counseling before getting married and it was very important to us because we wanted to make sure we hashed out any little thing or got to know certain things about each other before making that huge commitment of marriage. So when we were looking for premarital counselors, I didn't even know where to start, to be honest. Hmm. I think I just like Googled. Um, so I was looking on psychology today, looking for mental health counselors. I also found this website, Thumbtack, and that's where we ultimately found our premarital pastor. So when looking for our premarital counselor, I wanted someone who came off as down to earth, um, knowledgeable and had experience with counseling um, couples who are getting ready for marriage. So when I was looking for hours, I made sure that those boxes were checked off for me and for us. And so what I did was I sent Charles, I think about three different people that I narrowed it down and was like, what do you think? And he was just like, all right, this one looks good. <laughs> and um, so we went with our um, pastor, Devin. He's actually located in Texas. And at the time, this was before COVID-19 happened. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we were like, well, because because he was in Texas, we we're like, oh, well, do we really want to not have the opportunity to be in person with our premarital counselor? Or does it not matter to us? So are you sure it wasn't before COVID? It was. What, what were we on? Zoom? No, we started with him once COVID, but we picked him out before COVID. So we started after COVID happened? During COVID, yeah. Okay, before, right, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. But I'm saying when we picked him out, it, this was before COVID, this was before Zoom, and everybody was, like, that was, like, the only option for people. Mm -hmm. We picked him knowing that we would be having him on Zoom before okay. that was, like, the norm. So we got engaged in June, June 29th. <laughs> Um, of 2019 and then we selected him I want to say maybe like January February of 2020 so this and then the whole world got shut down in March yep yes so when we picked him that was one of our concerns well do we really want to have someone who we can't be in person with which is funny because it ended up working out really well anyway um, but some of the things that I really liked about him was all his comments talked about how down-to-earth he was um and so for me that was really big because i wanted to be able to have like real conversations without feeling like mm, you know mm -hmm. having to sugarcoat so that was like big for me what about you when we picked pastor Devin? uh i think overall i liked having the um virtual option i think because for me with my schedule mm -hmm. just kind of being like all over the place and for for people that do kind of have a, a scattered type of work schedule it does make it a little easier to be able to make appointments you can make it like your own time you don't have to worry about okay i'm like super tired from work and now i gotta get in the car and i gotta go drive to this person's office like no i can do this from the comfort of my own bed so i, I really appreciated that aspect of it and overall i thought he was he was good he made it he made it fun like it wasn't something that was like supposed to be super like rigid and like serious um but really it was just giving us opportunity to learn different things about us that we didn't know but let me tell you when pastor devin I'm just turning on the fan when pastor devin sent us the questions remember how many questions it was remember how I, many questions you got and i got yeah substantially more i think he i think <laughs> so he had two sets of questions and some were like just the preliminary pre preliminary I, pre thank you <laughs> um questions and so i got those where it was just like four core questions and i'm going to put them up on the screen but it was mostly like you know what are your expectations as a wife or for your husband but then he got like the more deeper questions and i'm going to put it on the screen when you were reading them all you're like why do i have to answer all Thanks, these questions are fortified through your interaction with dolores what can slash will you do to take the walls down what does dolores have to say slash do to help take your walls down in light of the questions how can i help you are you stressed <laughs> there I had, like, 50 questions you had like five 
Yeah, but then <laughs> after after a while, he was like, "Oh, Dolores, I forgot to send you the same set of questions." So I ended up getting those questions too. Yeah, that's right. So that was our that was you know our experience, and initially we planned to just do like one session a month um, up until June 2021 when we we're getting ready to get married. But we ended up just doing it like back to back because it just flowed so nicely. And one thing I really liked about him was he wasn't going to just make it like cookie cutter just because like he went with what our needs were. So he was like, if we get through phase one and two, which I think the first phase was, uh, I don't remember. I think a part of it was um, handling like conflict. Yes. Um, there was another section about dealing with each other's respective family members. Yes. Um, there was one about money management. There yeah. was one about uh, children and just child rearing in general. Oh. And I, that was all, that's all I remember. There were five. I'll put it on the screen, but there were five or six different ones, um, subsections that we had as a part of our premarital counseling. Which one was your favorite? How to handle uh, conflict amongst dealing with your family members. Yeah. Uh, that was my favorite because I think he illustrated some important points with one of them being that no matter what is going on within your own personal household, you do your best to keep it within the household, which means that if uh, you and your spouse get into some type of argument, you don't bring it up um, to your friends and family. Now, I mean, obviously, yeah, every, everyone to a certain extent is gonna end up venting, but for a lot of the big stuff, you don't do that because the issue is for those that are outside of your marriage, you bring up that, oh, your spouse did X, Y, Z, you guys and have already talked about it. You the right, you guys have already talked about it and got over it, but now that person is gonna look at your spouse, you know, very differently. So, you know, he the best advice he could have gave us is that like, even though, you know, we may be um, having a argument or discussion about something, um, if anyone asks how a relationship is, we say it's doing fine. Yeah. And we'll leave like, it we at good. that. And we'll leave it we at good. that. But then you really solve the conflicts between each other. Yeah. Which I really liked. I will say though, if you're like in an abusive relationship or something that, you know, is really serious and going on, I think you should talk to someone. Sure. Um, but I think, you know, when it's those like petty arguments or you're just trying to learn how each other live because we both have different living styles. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that'll be another video. <laughs> but we both have different living styles, so it's really important to just keep that between your each other, those little petty things because I would never want to tell a family member something that happened and then now they're looking at him sideways even though I got over it. So that was something that we really liked out of the conversation. So I feel like a lot of people when they go to premarital counseling, they're like, or you know, when our married friends would tell us about premarital counseling, they'd be like, it's gonna be life changing. You're gonna learn so much new things about each other. Do you feel like you learned new things about me? Yes. Wow. I do. Yeah. I, and not that it necessarily came up during the actual discussion, so to speak, but maybe like later on, like for example, I think when it came to, we didn't really dive that in, to, in deep into it, but when it came with like child rearing, mm -hmm. and I think later on we happened to have a discussion about how we plan to discipline our children, and your experiences and my experiences are totally different. And I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna abuse my children, but you know, tap, little tap, tap. I think it just goes to show that even after counseling is over, that there's still some opportunities to have um, discussion on issues that will likely come up, you know, during our during our marriage. Right. And one of the things I really liked about Pastor Devin that we worked with was he was like, y'all have me for life. So even though we finished our premarital counseling, it's not, this isn't the end for us or with mm -hmm. him. Like we can always contact him. So that was really important to us. I think some of the conversations that we had in premarital counseling, they weren't any new conversations that we haven't had before. But because we had a mediator, it forced us to dive deeper into those conversations mm -hmm. and not keep them really on the surface. Or when they get uncomfortable, usually for me, when conversations get uncomfortable, I'm like, I'm good, like, mm -hmm. let's just, we're good with this conversation. But when you're actually in premarital pre counseling, you have the mediator to continue. And then to also kind of help you like really realize what the person's actually trying to say or where that experience is coming from because a lot of times the way we think or the way our, sh our thoughts are shaped are based on our past experiences that maybe we don't really understand. Uh, brought attention to things that we did not think of. 
Like for me, thinking about finances, I don't like to discuss finances because looking at numbers stresses me out. And I love talking <laughs> about money. I love talking about budgeting. I'm always like, okay, so we're gonna put this in this. <laughs> And then you don't want to touch this section of the language. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's literally what it's like when we talk about finances. I uh, get super excited about it, super trying to plan it all. And he's just like, I mean, the money's there. Right. We got money. As long as the checks are clearing, we good. But for me, that makes me very uncomfortable. Like, Let me tell you why. I need my money in buckets, and I need to know what my money is doing for each facet of my life. I can't look. You know, let me tell you why. Because you get stressed out because especially... Um, you know, people that go into higher education know you have monster loans uh, that you have to pay, and just looking at it just all the time, just it just don't make you feel good at all. So I think that's why part of the reason I just kind of stay away. I don't really like to look at numbers, but you know what? That's the beauty of marriage is the fact that you don't have to do everything. If there's something that your spouse is really good at that they want to do, you kind of hand it over to them. So play on your strengths. <laughs> that's and that's definitely yeah. something we learned in yeah. marriage counseling that you want to play on your strengths. So. Yeah. Um, and then also under the um, how it brought attention to the things that we didn't think of, it also allows you to advocate for what you want out of marriage. So we got to talk about what are expectations of, you know, what are my expectations of a husband? And then I got to learn what are his expectations of a wife, which is so important because a lot of times we don't really have those conversations um, where you really have to just be intentional about the conversation and what you expect, what you want out of your partner. And I, and I think some people just don't realize it. I mean, I think after you get engaged, you know, you, you think about all the stuff that comes with like the wedding planning and things like that, but you don't really think about exactly what it actually takes to build a marriage. And like, you guys are gonna have like disagreements and stuff, but I think one of the things that he emphasizes is that, you know, it's a team effort. Like we're both on the same team. We both want the same goal, which is to have a happy, and and healthy and happy and healthy marriage so just understand that you know you guys have the same goal and you guys are trying to work together to achieve it and then to have fun with it you know kind yeah. of going back to it being cool like yes the wedding and all that stuff can be beautiful but let's make marriage cool mm -hmm. and the experience that you're gonna have together cool obviously like as your relationship and your marriage evolves there's gonna be different challenges in life because life will bring some challenges like COVID right and COVID has like a thousand challenges within it um so life is going to bring those challenges but i think marriage counseling premarital counseling gave us the tools to have those you know that communication and that dialogue and for me like i'm not a confrontational person i don't like to dive into conversations but luckily i have a partner who's like mm, we don't sit and we don't talk about this um and i think i got a lot of those tools through premarital counseling like it's okay to have those conversations it's okay to have business meetings um as our pastor Devin talked about so having those coming together and being like we need to have a business meeting let's have this discussion it really helps us to continue to evolve as a couple and to know that we're in this together regardless of driving each other crazy. <laughs> I agree. Yes. <laughs> so comment below if you're newly engaged or thinking about getting married and if you've already tried premarital counseling or if you're interested in it, let us know what your experience was like or if you're gonna start searching or if you want more information or questions from us, we'd love to have the conversation and continue that with you. So take care of yourself. Make sure you thumbs up if you like this video, if it was helpful for you. And take care. Peace. Bye. Bye.